Elizabeth Woodville was born into a noble family with Lancastrian ties. Her father, Richard Woodville, was made a baron, and her mother came from the Ducal House of Luxembourg. A young widow with two children, she unexpectedly became the wife of King Edward IV, causing an uproar at court. As queen, Elizabeth brought her relatives to court, sparking jealousy and political intrigue. She endured her husband's deposition, exile, and restoration, followed by his death. She was the mother of the princes in the tower, whose fate remains a mystery. Later, she allied with the Tudors by marrying her daughter to Henry VII, uniting two rival houses. She weathered storms of war, loss, and court rivalry, while preserving her dignity and influence. Her final years were spent in seclusion at a convent. Heredin Barbarossa was born on the island of Lesbos to a father of Albanian or Greek origin and a local woman. With his brother Aruj, he began as a traitor and later turned to piracy. After Arud's death, he carried on their work, becoming a naval commander of the Ottoman Empire. Barbarossa became the greatest admiral of his time, bringing the coasts of Algeria, Tunisia, and Tripoli under Ottoman control. His name struck fear in Europe. He attacked Rome, fought the fleets of Spain and Genoa, and his red beard became legend. Under Suleiman the Magnificent, he rose to Grand Admiral and led brilliant campaigns in the Western Mediterranean. I am the Lord of the Seas, and the waves are my subjects, he said. He died in Istanbul at an old age, surrounded by glory. His tomb became a symbol of Ottoman naval power, and to this day, Turkish sailors salute him. Sequoia was born into the Cherokee tribe in what would later become Tennessee. His father was a white trader, his mother Cherokee. He became a blacksmith and silversmith, lost a leg, but not his spirit. Though illiterate, he dreamed of giving his people a written language. Sequoia created the world's first syllabary for his native Cherokee language. It was a cultural revolution. Within years, literacy in the tribe became widespread. He was called a prophet and a wizard admired by some feared by others. He traveled across lands, promoting literacy for other native peoples. I gave my people a weapon that does not rust, he said. At the end of his life, he dreamed of uniting native nations, but died on the road. Trees, towns, and even a spacecraft were named after him. His name became a symbol of the power of language and spirit. Isabella Clara of Austria was born to Archduke Leopold V and Claudia de' Medici. She spent her childhood at the Tyrolean court, raised under strict Catholic values. She was married to Duke Charles II of Mantua to strengthen the Austro-Italian alliance. As Duchess of Mantua, Isabella Clara tried to reconcile internal factions and ease the duchy's decline. Her husband, cruel and erratic, subjected her to humiliation and isolation. After his assassination in the palace, Isabella briefly ruled as regent for their son, but was soon accused of conspiracy and confined to a convent. There she spent nearly 30 years in prayer, silence, and sorrow. She was called the recluse of Manchua, a woman whose fate became a tragedy in life and a legend after death. Talia d'Aragona was born in Florence, reportedly the daughter of a courtesan and a cardinal. From an early age, she was known for her sharp intellect, beauty, and eloquence. She received a classical education, wrote poetry, and mastered Latin and philosophy. A female thinker in an era when it was nearly impossible, Talia made her mark as a poet, philosopher, and intellectual. She defended women's right to love, reason, and self-expression engaging in philosophical dialogues with Italy's leading minds. In her treatise on the immortality of the soul, she spoke not only as a writer, but as an equal. I don't need to cover my thought with a quinoline, she wrote. Her salons drew poets and scholars, and her image continued to inspire artists and writers after her death. Her life stands as a rare example of female self-assertion in Renaissance Italy. 
where a woman's voice was seldom heard so strongly. Christian IV was born into the noble house of Wittelsbach in Palatinate Zweibrücken. He was raised with the ideals of enlightened monarchy. The young prince was prepared for a military and administrative career and received a classical education, typical of German rulers in the 18th century. As Duke, Christian IV focused on improving agriculture and the economy, supporting Enlightenment-inspired reforms. He reformed the legal system and strengthened regional finances. His court was known for intellectual refinement and gentle diplomacy. My strength lies in prudence, not in iron, he said. He maintained a steady policy and avoided conflicts, raising Zweibrücken's prestige. His portrait reveals reserved pride and cool courtesy, traits respected by his contemporaries. Louis XII was born in Blois into a cadet branch of the Valois dynasty. He spent his childhood at court, received a military education, and was raised with the ideals of knightly honor. In his youth, he took part in plots and conflicts, but later ascended the throne as the father of the people. King Louis XII is remembered as a ruler who sought justice and simplified governance. He abolished many taxes imposed by his predecessors and became known as a defender of the peasantry. When the king spares his people, he strengthens the throne, he said. Louis initiated the Italian wars to claim France's rights to Milan and Naples, but faced strong opposition. His marriages were part of political alliances, including his union with Anne of Brittany. Under his rule, the royal court gained influence, and Louis's modest appearance and manner helped build his reputation as a king close to the people. His reign is seen as a step toward a more humane monarchy. Maria Amalia of Saxony was born in Dresden to Elector Augustus III and Maria Josepha of Austria. Her upbringing combined devout Catholic piety with a brilliant education. At 16, she married the future King of Spain, Charles III. As Queen of Naples and Sicily, Maria Amalia was not merely the monarch's consort, but an active figure in court and cultural life. She supported Charles' reforms, took part in architectural projects, and patronized the sciences and arts. The royal couple lived in harmony, and Amelia had a strong influence on her husband's political and aesthetic decisions. She was called the queen of taste and reason, a rare blend of dignity and sensibility. She died at 36 in Madrid, leaving behind the image of an ideal enlightenment queen.